Yeah, I decided to split this into two. Just the rest of hometown and this'll be done. For now. If you call home again, Toriel will respond first with Hello, Dreamer residents, or something along those lines. And that's well it's either out of habit, at least a subconscious feeling that she might have made a mistake, or perhaps it's because there's at least one who still goes by that, who's still living. Um, not that I know of, Noel. You mean, it's not the first time? Well, that'd be convenient. <sighs> Far too convenient. <sighs> you are! Um... Yeah, I did. About yeah, Susie. Yeah, I bet you were jealous about that. Well, don't worry, I'm still alive. That saying Chris's position. <laughs> yeah. Chris is still alive for a start. Yep, go ahead. No one really gives her a chance. But once you give her a chance, she's actually quite nice in her own way. can't see any injury, and there's no sign that... Wait, Chris plays tricks on you? Well, that at least explains the red stain next to your bed. Yeah, quite serious. Yeah, you should. Well, I'm sure that... ...won't happen. Because she'll probably appreciate your company. Yeah. I didn't want to tell her about the chalk. Because... I suspect that she really will want to bite Chris's face off of that. Ah, I'm thinking that your mother's the mayor. <sighs> yeah. Something wrong by Chris's standards. Yeah, he did. Don't worry about it, it's not a problem. And then there's Cathy, with a Y. Cat's flap. Uh, huh. Yeah, getting your scent on, Chris. 
Uh, yeah, we know. Yeah, that's why I talk to you. Yeah, that starts with your sister. Wait. Oh, yeah. Well, at least we know what relation you are to Kaki, with, a, with an I. What? I'd say you're being quite kind, Kathy. That wasn't a compliment! I mean... I suspect that she'd say that regardless of how well you played. Oh, I'm thinking... Cat Petters 2? I mean, was there one in this world? I mean, what would that involve? Cat Pacino? I don't know what was in that. Uh, yeah. Because you are a talking cat. Oh, great. I have in front of me... ...a couple of rejects from Sonic Rush. If you say so. Soon. Well, that was embarrassing. Really embarrassing. <sighs> For good reasons. That was fun to you? His name is Azriel, not Doug. Probably a bit bigger than that. Well... <sighs> he'd be insulting his mother if he said... <laughs> Frozen cat food?! Are you kidding me? Of course he wouldn't... Like Fred's and cat's food. <sighs> then again, there's pet shampoo in the. Ah, and now we have enough of. Yeah, first we have some of Blaze's distant relatives. Now we have one of Vector's distant relatives. Bratty. Yeah, Bratty and Cassie in Undertale. They can get enough of each other. And yeah, Bratty, that's because she is a cat. Um. Yeah. What? Um, have you seen how you're dressed? Although, that's not really my concern, is it? Sorry. Some might consider that trashy, but in my case, that's not really my concern. 
and your... You decided to use, Chris. Taking advantage of them? And you call that cat family trashy. Well, you know what they say about karma, and what it is. Darling! Oh, you're the Delphian counterpart of... <sighs> yeah, this world's version of Metaton. You didn't get a robot body because, well... Alphys isn't a scientist in this universe. And here we have... Kawaii Hentai! Well, a Kawaii... Octopus monster, anyway. Um... You could do with a sign. Yeah, if you want attention, have a sign pointing you to where you are. Let's see. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll be honest. It's quicker. I know who you are. Um... How about... Onion? Okay, Onion Sun. Yeah, that's why I chose that, and it's also what you are called in Undertale. Mm, close enough. Again, close enough. Oh yes, another one telling me to come back tomorrow. Let's see, we have Papyrus, Susie, and now Onion Sun. And Standing there in the flannel shirts are uh, what in Undertale would be a rabbit and a dragon royal guard pair. And it looks like they're about as together in this universe as they are in that. Yeah, you guessed it. They're gay. Right, I think we know who... Yeah. He's here. And he's into country music. Surprised to confess into that. Yeah, that bit about the dreamer residence. That's if you call her again after this. Yeah, that'd be too convenient, wouldn't it? What about the number Sans gave? Yep. 
He was taking the Oh, and as for the next reintroduction... Different worlds, different events, same outcome. Azrael isn't dead in this universe, and yet they're still not together. This is Asgore Dreamer. In Undertale, he was the king of the underground, with Toriel as his queen. When Kara poisoned themselves and Azrael was killed by humans, he declared war while he was fueled by anger, hatred, and grief while Toriel fled to the ruins in anger, disgust, and grief. Could she have stopped him after their time to calm down? I guess we'll never know. In this universe, the cause is unknown. But it's not due to personal loss, that's for certain. Almost identical to the introduction in Undertale, except he has no obligation to kill anyone. Besides, it's not good business in this universe. And he knows Chris. Um, you don't know your own strengths, so that's understandable. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm... I can see why... Well, let's continue the investigation. That could just as easily be a bad day of business. Oh yes, Toriel did mention that. And the bunny, uh, owner of the, uh, diner also mentioned that. Um, yeah. Even though you seem to be struggling. Yeah, the old papers and the country CDs. I think I have an idea of... It might be due to substandard business practices. Well, he is a pusher. <laughs> Fuzzy pushover in both universes. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be why... Toriel kicked him out. Because he's far too generous. Hmm. And these flowers. In Undertale, the humans killed had those soul colours. Except the one in the middle, I'm thinking that's supposed to represent Flowey. That's later. Yeah. Well, she might want to forget him. He doesn't. If anything, he's more forgiving of her. And it looks like things are more squalid. Mm -hmm. 
that much. Yeah, Concede. <sighs> considering that this is a temperate area. Yeah, whichever way you enter, you'll enter the other way. As for what's beyond that door, I'm guessing we won't find out this time. <sighs> Excuse me. <sighs> okay, I can't let this pass. You want to give her flowers, you need to do it yourself not send your adopted child to deliver them. Imagine that, how that would look. Get the rejection first hand and get it into your fuzzy head that she's not interested in gifts. Love cannot be bought. <sighs> You're just as much a coward as Toriel believes you to be in Undertale. And considering that your generosity is causing you to be behind on rent, it would appear that things fell apart quite considerably since you and Toriel separated. More so on your side than hers, as you're just too nice to hold anything against anyone for any length of time. Although I suspect that she broke up with you, rather than you breaking up with her. Different timelines, similar trials. Although... I suspect that you had a part in naming this town, as we know how terrible you are with names. <sighs> Although, Azrael is probably quite good by your standards. Did he not realise that going into business with his mentality was a bad idea? Was their marriage doomed from the start? Who knows? But at the end of Undertale, he got work as a gardener. It appeared that he did better at providing services than goods. Perhaps he wasn't as into that side of it in this universe. Based on the lower amount of foliage at the school in hometown. Is it just me? Or do genuinely nice people like Asgore always seem to get a raw deal? As if the universe says, what a nice guy! I'm going to make his life a living hell, because <laughs> you, that's why. And that doesn't seem to be gender-specific. It can happen to nice people in general. When the universe gives you the finger, it's asking to get snapped. So that knows what it's putting us through. <sighs> How much will it take before he's pushed too far and the song in his head changes from Sunshine, Lollipops and Rainbows by Leslie Gore to No More Mr. Nice Guy by Alice Cooper? <sighs> and between those two songs, ten years passed. <sighs> And that's coincidental. Right. Let's see what... Well, we'll know soon enough how she'll react. Yeah, we've already gone through this. And it looks like there's nothing else for us in the rest of hometown. Wait. Rudy had a lot of roses left by him, possibly by Asgore, even though it's not in his shop. He probably left them when Toriel isn't there. Either they're just good friends or... 
Asgore's probably by. It's unconfirmed, but it would explain much. Also, that van is tall to take into account the horns. Even if Asgore is no longer with her. As the sunroof would make it easier to fit inside. As the horns can stick out of it. Well... It's cheaper than a convertible, isn't it? Probably safer as well. <sighs> Although... Seems a bit... Where's the gas station? Never mind. Well, that's one way of putting it. Well, at least that hasn't changed about you. Yeah, I think that would be a bit much. Mm, yeah, might as well talk about it. What video game? Something multiplayer. Oh, this universe's version of Super Smash Brothers. And he named Yoshi. Well, the equivalent of this anyway. I mean, what did Chris name? Kirby? Well, they're deceptively cute enough. Yeah. I can see why he'd do that. Yeah. That's just mildly irritating. And I can see how he'd go off Dr. Zeus after that. So there's something positive for you to think about regarding Asgore. Now that's revealing. How so? Hmm, considering... Less than... Um, yeah, not really possible as... They're human for starts. Yeah, according to Birdley, his academic achievements aren't that... Oh yeah, the flowers. <sighs> yeah. I thought you'd figure that out. Uh, huh. Wait... Let's see... Uh, huh. Okay, I called Asgore out on his cowardice, so I can't ignore Toriel's without granting a double standard. You want him to stop doing that? Just go over and tell him! Or at least call him via his business phone number, if he has one, and tell him. You're harming both of you without any good reason by not letting him know where you two stand, or at least give him a chance to give you his side of it. If he hasn't already. I mean, are there no marriage counsellors in this world? Did you two not try one of those? It would help to know how you two broke up in this universe, as it clearly wasn't because Azriel died. At least, Alphys arranges the flowers in a more decorative way in their trash cans. While Asgore is just too nice, forgiving and easygoing in both universes, Toriel's just as passive-aggressive, judgmental and unforgiving. 
at least towards adults in both universes. She's more forgiving towards children, though. I mean, did she not try to persuade Asgore that going into a goods business was a bad idea? As she knew him better than most? Or at least... At least say, please stop giving away your flowers. You cannot afford to be that generous. And you are causing harm not just to yourself, but your whole family. Rather than just kick him out. If this Asgore is the same in terms of personality as he is in Undertale, it's likely that Fuzzy Manchild would stop this unknowingly destructive behaviour if he was aware of that. <sighs> they seem to go for the worst case scenario quickly, don't they? And not just monsters. In Undertale, she called him a cowardly whelp for not simply taking one human soul and heading to the surface to get the other six. A bit hypocritical, we might say, as she left him to keep things together by himself and hid in the ruins, rather than do it herself, or better, try to stop him, as she eventually did in the true pacifist run. Grief can affect judgment as it did with both of them. It caused him to, to declare war on humanity to stop his people giving up hope. While she ran away to hide in order to try and keep any who fell down away from him. Which was a futile gesture as they all got away. Considering those events, it puts the Deltarune versions of Asgore and Toriel into perspective. An Undertale it was an order which resulted in six humans being killed, and it appears that they were killed before that fuzzy pushover met them, considering that their items didn't even get past the core. In Deltarune, it appears that it was because he was terrible at business. In both cases, she decides to distance herself from him rather than at least try to help him to become better treating him with the same amount of contempt in both universes. Although, one case is more understandable than the other. Guess which one? <sighs> it seems that they all jump to the conclusion of the worst case scenario around here, don't they? It's definitely looking like the behaviour of Chris is partially due to this broken home. Something not exclusive to a race of mostly hairless apes that populate this planet. The same might apply to Asriel, as he might not be home that often because it's too painful to do so. Either that or he's just a good student. Without any hint of Azriel or any character which is at least partially not up, this story would probably make Rebel Without a Core seem more like a family friendly Disney movie. Let's continue with what I said earlier. The message of this story appears to be this. You're either a nice person who is incapable of holding a grudge and is a failure of what they do, or a ruthless person who maintains a grudge with anyone they believe is worth it and is a success with what they do, an Asgore or a Toriel. But what kind of person really came out on top? One has their heart in the right place and the other has their head in the right place that they're each lacking what the other has. That's one of the main things that's wrong with this world, and ours. Some people can only see things in black and white. It's either completely right or completely wrong. Nothing in between. For example, there are some people who can't tell the difference between killing out of self-defense and killing simply for sadistic pleasure. <sighs> right.
right. Ah, good. It's not snail. <sighs> I have a feeling that... attitude you have towards Asgore, even though he's trying to build bridges as you burn them, might bite you in the fluffy rear as far as how Chris is concerned. <sighs> well, I'm not saying that the blame is entirely on her, as Asgore has his fair share of it as well. Ah, uh, yes, because she's afraid that Chris would take the chocolates. Is it just me, or is the message that Toby Fox is giving? If that's what married life is like, and how it ends, I'm better off single. It'll save me a whole lot of trouble. The end of a marriage, in a lot of cases, is divorce. Where they take half of what was once both theirs, if they're lucky. And in the worst case scenario, if applicable, one never sees the children again and they still have to pay for their care and of costs. And that's even if they're not their children. It appears that Toriel has granted Asgore some small mercy in not keeping Chris and Azrael from visiting him. Is this because of some vestige of what she once felt for him? Is this to not cause the children further psychological harm? This is to show them how not to be. The vision of a complete and total failure. Who knows, but what is certain is that she didn't stop them. Although... In Undertale, her idea of mercy was to fireball him, give him all the blame and outright give him the cold shoulder, even though she could have stopped the other six from getting killed as there's nothing more dangerous than a maternally outraged boss monster. Well, almost nothing. The responsibility for his actions was obvious to him. But what about hers? If the Deltarune version of Toriel is anything like the Undertale version, in terms of mercy, she should bring on the ruthlessness as... it at least get over with! Anyway, time for this adventure to end. Yeah. Okay. This seems like Shoot of the Bells might be a bit too appropriate for this. Um, Chris, what are you doing? You just took out your own soul. That shirt, the creepiness, the craving for chocolate like Toriel craves snails, the knife, the red eye. Oh. start to grow and the places that you know seem like fantasy there's a light inside your soul that's still shining in the cold with the truth the promise in our hearts 
Don't forget, I'm with you in the dark. Yeah. It appears that Chris might not be the Deltarune version of Frisk. <sighs> they might be the Deltarune version of Kara, though, based on the available evidence. I look forward to Chapter 2. Partly to see where this is going. Although... What happens if I call home from the Dark World? Why didn't it reach there? You know what? Let's find out. It would appear that W.D. Garster has something to do with this. Well, that's the end of this chapter. Until next time. Hail the rabbit!